Welcome to the fourth module in our subject, Basic Physics. This module is about light and optics. There's some fascinating physics involved, and it links very nicely to some of the work we've covered in previous modules, particularly the one on waves, and also the one we've just completed on electricity and magnetism. Now we are going to also focus on keeping our physics about the world around us, as physics always is. We have a lot of experience looking at light, lots of light sources. We're familiar with the light from the sun, maybe the colours of the rainbow, electric lights, and more recently things like lasers. It turns out that the development of our understanding of light has been tied very closely to the kinds of light sources we've had available to us. You can imagine it was much harder to do detailed experiments in light and optics when the best you had was a candle. We've been able to do much better as our technology has evolved. In fact, the development of our understanding of light has led to some really remarkable chapters in scientific history. One important one was at the time when the debate was about what kind of phenomena does light really represent. The two main ideas were that light is a wave or that light is made of particles. When you look at light, it, it travels so fast, it, it happens what seems to be to us almost instantly. You turn a light on and it's there, you turn a light off and it's gone. How could you tell what it was made up of? And this was a big debate for a very long time. One of the main contributors at this time, not surprisingly, was someone we've heard about before, Isaac Newton. Again, a very clever scientist, uh, a genius who dabbled in all areas of understanding the universe around us. Now, Isaac Newton was a very big supporter of light being composed of particles. And he developed a very, very well-made theory based upon very careful observations, some very, very clever mathematics, uh, based on the idea that light was moving around as particles. And because of his uh, excellent work and because of his reputation, that for a very long time was, was the theory that was taken the most seriously. But other scientists at the time were also quite keen that light really could be described as a wave. They weren't sure what kind of wave, but they'd done a lot of work in different kinds of waves, including things like sound waves, and they knew that a lot of the properties we saw from light could also be explained by waves. In fact, at the time, there wasn't much to, to tell the difference between the two. Things that you see light do, like reflecting off surfaces or bending as it moves through different materials, a process we call a refraction that we'll be talking about later in this module, both of them could be explained quite well, either by particles or by waves. There was one slight difference. When Isaac Newton described how light bends as it goes, for example, from air into glass, it was important in his theory that the light sped up it got faster as it went into the glass than it had been travelling in the air. The wave theory, to explain how light would bend, it had to insist that the light slowed down as it went into glass. Now, measurement of the speed of light is very difficult. It's a very high speed. And certainly measuring the difference between light in air and light in glass was even more difficult. So it wasn't easy to tell the difference between the two. But there was one area where we could have a difference, and that is the area of waves overlapping and causing interference patterns. You remember we talked a little bit about that in the sound module. If light really is a wave, then we should be able to take two light sources and see some kind of interference pattern. But we really don't see that. If you look at the two headlights of a car as it's coming towards you, you see two points of light, but you can't move your head from side to side and go through regions of high intensity and low intensity like we did with the loudspeaker experiment in sound. The absence of interference patterns seemed to really go in Newton's favour. It seemed like the absence of interference meant light must be a particle. If it was a wave, we would see interference. And that was believed for quite a long time. Until the start of the 19th century, when another equally clever scientist by the name of Thomas Young did some very good experiments and showed that if you looked really carefully, light did in fact show interference patterns. Now this was almost conclusive. There was no way you could imagine particles overlapping and destructively interfering, or particles overlapping and constructively interfering. This idea of, of bright and dark uh, constructive and destructive interference really was a wave phenomenon. And from that point onwards, it was really the end of, of Newton's corpuscular theory. A question remained, however, if light is a wave, what's doing the waving? We know that when we talked about sound waves, it was the compression wave in the air. The molecules in the air were moving backwards and forwards to make the wave. 
What was it that was making light move? Well, that was a little bit unclear, and in fact, that will be the topic, uh, that will be the subject of our next topic that we're going to be covering. But before we get there, I want you to keep working on that discussion forum. Again, interacting with your fellow students. One idea you might have is, what kinds of light sources are you familiar with? What are the differences between them, and what do you think might be similar?